So this is how to make a pom-pom tail with a wire inside so that it's poseable. You can also make the same tail without the wire inside, um, but that's um, that. then it's just a floppy, floppy tail. Okay, so let's do this. So what you need is a cardboard piece. We sort of suggest use a, um, a thin cardboard, like from a cereal box or something like that. And it needs to be obviously the length of your tail there like that. So it needs to um, fit onto here. And then the other thing that you do need is um, a needle and thread, she said with un anxiety rising. I've got thread somewhere. I'm just gonna have to get up and get it. Oh my goodness, what am I like today? Oh, okay, I'm, I, it's not so far at all, but I still have to go and get it. Oh yeah, I've got it here. And what I'm using is red thread so that you can see, that's not what you're using, but I'm using red thread so you can see um, the, the stitches that I'm putting in there. And I'm actually using, you need a strong thread. Otherwise, um, it won't work if you've got one that tears easily. Right, I'm going to cut this. There. And I might have to use the other sewing needle, but I'll see how I go. So you're going to thread your needle with um, the strong thread that you're using. I can't actually remember if you get that in, in there or not. Um, I haven't looked at the instructions, have I? Let's have a look at the instructions. I'll put it away again, make it all look nice. But um, let's have a look what you get in there. So, um, yes, uh, no. So you will also need household scissors, pliers, strong needle and strong thread. Okay, so you need to supply your own thread, which if you've got like a, an embroidery thread or, or like a, a strong polyester thread, that would, that is perfect. So once you thread your needle, you lay the tail onto here, have that at the ready, but now you're going to start wrapping the, um, the whole tail up with wool first and what you can do is you could um, just bend a tiny bit of that around the end of the cardboard you need your pliers for that as well so that it's just it just stays in place once the first layer is put on there okay let's turn this the right way around I'm not really that clumsy normally. So you can trap the, the cardboard at the end by there, pinching the wire into it. You've got your 20 centimeters there. Then you start out, um, well, you can start out however you like, but I've started out with black on, on the cut and you've got your wool bat, so you have to be, um, Obviously, careful that you don't tear this. Try and keep it in one continuous um, length. Wrap it around. This is this is like making a pom pom, but you're making a long pom pom basically. And then the next color is the um, rust fox rust brown variegated that you get in your kitten pack. There, wrap that around. Next, and then we're using white. So this is if you're making a tortoiseshell kitten, obviously, which is the plan for this one. I'll wrap that around in white. Just a few wraps and then you're starting over again with black. And um, you're repeating this. Ide ideally, you want to finish with black. So have like a black tipped tail. You can shuffle the, um, the colors up a bit if you're running out of space or stretch them out a little bit more. Go on to that rusty color again. Uh, round white. How many am I doing? How many colors? One, two. Yes, yeah, so I'm nearly at the end here. I think my cardboard was a tiny bit longer than um, I said originally. There. And then finish off with the black. There. A bit longer this one for a tail for the end of the tail. OK, 
okay so you're just literally layering the wool on there it's not it's not put on too thick I mean you can make it thicker you just end up with a bushier tail and then all you're going to do is and this is the important bit you're now going to sew along here but you have to sew so that you trap the wire on one minute on one side and then one minute on the other side of um, just going to stretch that cut out so whether you start at the top or at the bottom it doesn't really matter so you're going in first of all and secure your thread and ideally if you can see this I don't know if you can see this but you need to sew one from one to one side to the other um, so that you trap the wire in the middle but you can't really make huge um, I'm gonna put a knot on this now don't make um, don't make the, the stitches too wide because and, and you will see in a minute why you can't make them too wide because what you're creating right now is you're perforating the cardboard with every stitch that you're putting in there and uh, when you take the cardboard out the stitches need to be quite close together so they need to be close together in in length but also in width so oh this is all crinkled up Sorry, I just need to sort my thread out. I've made a bit of a mess of this. There. Um, you'll see it in a minute when I zigzag in and out, but in really tiny little zigzags, that's what I'm saying. So, and also it's best if you go over it um, twice. So you're going forward, but at the same time, you're going um, left and right of the wire every time. So you can feel it with your fingers. Um, I've got the wire on the top of the cardboard so you need to move forward along the tail and get as men get as much of the of the wool as you can which is why you need to go over it two or three times and um, every time you stab the needle into the cardboard you that is one perforation and that will help later to take the um, to take the cardboard off which is what you need to do um, but you also so you need to trap the wire and you need to trap the wool um, with all with the stitches so you can't really go um, along it too often so I would definitely say two to three times and I'm trying to do this as fast as I can so you don't have to watch me and it looks like um, oh you can see it probably best now with the white stitch the red against the white so I'm going in um, through the cardboard and I've got my wire now trapped in the middle of that stitch if you miss it once if the wire isn't trapped don't worry too much about it because um you know if you miss once it's not the end of the world there will be lots of other stitches that has trapped it so don't don't be too worried about uh, missing it but um it's more important that you have the stitches nice and close together so you don't have um you don't end up with lots of um cardboard left in the tail um, and you you need that middle line to be quite uh, neat because that's going to sort of disappear into the middle of the tail but you don't want it to be a fat uh, center you want it to be quite thin so that it um, integrates straight away I, I don't know if I'm making any sense whatsoever but if it, if it helps you at all to look at our website where we have got a written tutorials um, and then of course you get this in our box as well with the that makes the kitten so I'm um, I'm gonna try and do this as neat as I can to see if I get away with I might just get away with one but I really highly recommend that you go over this two or three times um, so that you don't have to see me do this again when I'm coming back on the tail and then I'll show you what happens next once you've sewn along the tail um yeah so so whilst i'm doing this i am going to just tell you a little bit more of what we're actually um up to so we've got uh, an exciting opportunity to do um, um a, a tutorial for the uh, royal voluntary services on their online um well it's a it's a facebook group called the virtual village hall i don't know if any of you have come across this but it is a really exciting um opportunity because um well working with them and supporting a really good course and that is happening on the 3rd of december 
at 11 a.m. I do believe um, Emma will put me right if I said that wrong but no doubt she'll be sharing a link in a minute and so basically we uh, you can you can get your um, heart with ribbon pack now which um, is what we are uh, we've put together as a product remember you can use your discount code if you're ordering today the 30th of November and you can make in effect three hearts with ribbon I'm just going to put them here so you can look at them while I'm sewing you can make um, these very same three hearts with the very same ribbon there and um, and it's a free tutorial it's um, only half an hour long so it's not um, it's just short short and sweet and um, that is on Facebook look for the virtual village hall um, and if you want to uh, get your heart with ribbon pack from us, then you can buy that um, now. We're selling this now. You get the instructions in the pack as always. So it's not just the wool and the materials, but it doesn't have any tools in it. So you need to use your own, own tools. Um, and then you can join me live on Facebook and Emma will be there as support as well on um, Thursday this week at um, 11 a.m. which is the 3rd of December and we can make um, a lovely heart together and um, yeah have a bit of fun so that's one thing that's happening um, we've also got um, we're, we're also getting um, excited because we are running um, a workshop for the cat protection league so we're, we're hoping that uh, we can promote that as much as we can with this month uh, next month so December's makers box um, and it's basically it's the it's a mini mini tiny little version of the cut that you're making here but um, of course you would be supporting the cut protection um, as well in helping them rehome cuts look after stray cuts um, help ill and injured cuts and um, yeah if you're a cut lover then that's probably something that you love getting involved in anyway but that is not until the end of February but you can already get excited because <laughs> we are we're not even selling the workshop pack yet but I just need to tell you this because obviously we are already doing a cut here and it's um, a great opportunity to talk about it right I'm nearly at the end oh, I've made a bit of an extra loop here oh well never mind I'm just going to cut that off um, so I'm nearly at the end and I'm going to show you the next bit which is um, when you do this is quite nerve-wracking so I do want to cover that um, because I, I don't want you to be left on your own with this if you um, have never done this before so what you would be doing is you're going over this um, again at least one more time if not twice but I'm going to leave it like that now because um, it will be fine just for the purpose of demonstrating and I'm going to cut the last bit off there. So then you're going to cut the side of the tail open. So this is no different from when you do a pom-pom. Because you've fastened this, uh, the wool on really well, you shouldn't have any, any sort of um, wool coming off. So you're cutting the side open like that. All the way. To the top there and then you do this on the other side there. Got my stripy tail there this is obviously a technique that you can use for other projects as well so it's a good one to, to learn if you want to make a fox tail or um, a squirrel tail or anything that has got a bushy tail so now you've got your a cardboard that you've um, sewn up inside you've got your wire still there and all you need to do now is and you obviously perforated this cardboard so much that actually with a little bit of help you should just be able to um, to literally tear that off the center as long as you've got a nice strong thread it should just tear even just with that one um, one line you might have a little bit of um, cardboard left in there and that's fine so just tear that off along the perforation, especially if you've done it several times over, you will, that, that cardboard is really ready to come out. So don't be afraid to pull it because you have sewn that together so well that it, it wants to come out. You shouldn't have to cut into it because you don't want to cut the thread ac accidentally. And if you've got a bit of cardboard left in there, don't fret over it, it's fine. There. 
And once you've done that, you will have made your tail. So you might have to just um, trap that end of the tail in the wire again. I've just pulled that off accidentally. Oh, there's a bit of cardboard left that we probably want to take out. So the tail um, basically <laughs> looks like a um, the cat's just, I've, I've completely taken, put her out of shape here. But once the tail is done, you can now um, curl it around the cat to make it look nice and cozy. This is now um, secure. Um, if you have bits at the very end that come off, you can felt them down. You can see the end of my thread here. Um, so that because I've done this at a rush, I'm just going to cut this off. Um, the, the tail will be absolutely secure. And then you cover up the join here with a bit of black so it makes it more integral to the body. Um, and then you've got your your um, kitten that you can curl up with a tail either underneath or it can go over the top, whichever way. However your kitten sleeps normally, that's how you can pose the cat. And uh, I don't want to leave you with this image. Just imagine that when you've had taken care and you've got that little uh, tail done and it can, it can sort of curve underneath the cat and um, or you can have it going like that either way. However you want your little kitten to be curled up in your little basket.